Hi there. In the previous video, we saw how atomic orbitals combine to form new set of equivalent orbitals known as hybrid orbitals. We saw unlike pure orbitals, the hybrid orbitals are used in bond formation. And we also explored how hybridization does so much better job of explaining the geometry of different molecules unlike VBT. In this video, we will explore sp, sp2, sp3 hybridization in a lot more depth and we will also find out why some elements form more bonds than what we would have expected from their valence electronic configuration. Let's start with sp hybridization. So here, what happens during sp hybridization? One s orbital and one p orbital mix together to form two sp orbitals. Each of these new orbitals is made up of 50% S character and 50% P character. Think of them as two directional lobes. So you can see this plus and this minus. This is like one part. I'll draw it roughly here. So this is like one part plus and a minus. And then there is another this is small one and this is the big one. So this is minus and this is plus. So you can see that these two lobes are pointing in opposite direction, forming a straight line with 180 degree angle between them. This linear arrangement helps minimize these electronic repulsions, yeah, which makes the molecule more stable. Now you might be wondering what is this big lobe and a plus doing here, the small lobe and a minus doing here. Well, this plus and a minus is not just for a linear geometry, but in other geometries too. These signs, plus and a minus, show the phase of the orbital, kind of like which way a wave is moving. Uh, it is not about a charge or some electrostatic forces of attraction. So when orbitals mix, the wave patterns combine. In one direction, they add up and form this bigger lobe. That's where most of the electron density is, okay? And uh, the small lobe that you see out here, you're going to see it for all the hybrid orbitals going ahead. Okay, so the small lobes, where are they coming from? The small lobes come from the part where the wave don't combine as strongly. Now, the commonality in all of these is the big lobe is always pointing outward in the right direction to make a strong bond. Okay, now coming back to SP hybridization, let's understand SP hybridization with an example. Let's take an example of BEH2, beryllium hydride. So let's imagine how beryllium hydride molecule forms step by step from a single gaseous beryllium atom. So if you see beryllium in its ground state has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2 as the atomic number of beryllium is 4, correct? Now in its ground state, beryllium has both of its valence electrons sitting in the 2s orbital. That means it doesn't have any unpaired electrons available to bond with hydrogen. Not ideal for forming two bonds, right? So here is what happens next. One of the electrons from the 2s orbitals gets promoted to the 2p orbital like this. Check this out. So this promotion gives beryllium two unpaired electrons. Check. One in 2s and one in 2p which can then participate in bonding. Do you now understand the importance of this promotion to form two beryllium hydrogen bonds in BH2? So you know that in beryllium hydride, there should be two bonds. How do we form these two bonds, right? So this is how we are forming the two bonds. Beryllium needs two unpaired electrons, one for each hydrogen atom. So the promotion is necessary. This sets the stage for now hybridization. So the next step is this hybridization where 1, 2s and 1, 2p orbitals combine to form two equivalent sp orbitals, each ready to form a bond giving rise to a linear geometry. Now I have a question. Where is this energy coming for the excitation? Let's see the stepwise process of what's going on. To understand, let's consider this hypothetical stepwise process for the formation of BEH2. So you see, we have beryllium hydride compound getting formed here. This is the covalent compound we were wanting to form. And where are we forming it from? From the gaseous beryllium atom and hydrogen atoms. Having the configuration 1s2, 2s2. So this is what I've shown just the 2s2. And hydrogen have one electron each. So I'm drawing it like this. Okay. 
Now after the promotion we understood that we had 2s1, 2p1. This was required so that the two bonds can be formed. Then the next process was hybridization where we got two equivalent sp orbitals and then the next step which is the very crucial step is the bond formation. Okay, The whole process of forming BEH2 becomes energetically favorable only if the energy released when the two beryllium hydride bonds form is greater than the energy we have spent in exciting or promoting the electron and the hybridization process. So if that condition is met, the molecule forms and becomes stable. So you see this step of the bond formation is very, very crucial. So let's keep in mind the three steps here. The first one promotion, the second step hybridization. These steps will only occur if this third step of the bond formation will release enough energy that this energy is higher than all the energy which is required for these two steps combined together, the promotion and hybridization. And this is true for all the hybridizations which are yet to come. Okay, so now coming back to this whole final BH2 structure. So this is how the geometry looks like. You can see that we have made use of two sp hybrid orbitals. Each of these singly occupied. So this is one, let's say, and this is two. These are the two electrons that we have. So each of these singly occupied sp orbitals, if you see, overlap with the singly occupied 1s. So these are 1s orbitals. This is 1s. This is also 1s. 1s orbitals of hydrogen having electrons in exactly opposite direction. So this is one sigma bond and this is the second sigma bond. And because these two sp orbitals are pointing in exactly opposite directions, a 180 degree angle is observed between them. Okay, So this angle out here is 180 degree. We can simply write it like this, BEH2, right? So BH2 molecule is perfectly linear. It's simple, straight and stable. Now let's move on to the next one. Here is how it works. 1s orbital and 2p orbitals, say px and py, mix together to form 3sp2 hybrid orbitals. Each of these new orbitals has 67% p character and 33% s character. Where is it coming from? What you can do is just divide 100 by 3. So you get 33.3333. Let me write it like this. 33.33%. So you understand because there are two P's. So almost 66.66. That means 67% almost is the percentage P character. And percentage S character is 33.33. Which I am approximating to 33%. Okay. Now these three sp2 orbitals spread out in a flat triangle pointing toward the corner of the triangle. You see with the angle of what do you see 120 degree. That's right. So this arrangement helps reduce repulsion between electrons and gives better orbital overlap for bonding. Okay. So this is Triagonal planar geometry. Now let's understand it with an example of BCl3. So we have boron. In the ground state, boron has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So we just have one unpaired electron, you see. So boron should form only one single covalent bond if you consider just the ground state. But now you know there is promotion of electron. So the excited state electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s1, 2p2. So you can see that now we have a possibility of three bonds that can be formed, isn't it? So this 2s orbital and two of these 2p orbitals hybridize to form three sp2 hybridized orbitals okay and you have one unoccupied 2p orbital and the three sp2 orbitals align themselves in a form of a triangle giving you a triagonal planar geometry let's understand it now with the chlorine how the chlorine is forming the bond so you know that when we write the electronic configuration of chlorine it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p5 right so in the 3p you know that there are 1 2 3 4 and 5 5 electrons so one of the 3p orbitals has one single unpaired electron if you see so let me draw this one unpaired electron so this is the one unpaired electron of the 
3p orbital of chlorine okay now if you see these are the three sets of the sp2 hybrid orbitals that has been formed each having one electron of boron so this is how the bonded electrons look like so these are the bonding regions so now you, you can recollect that why we have shown this as a major lobe or the bigger lobe because that's where the electron density is maximum okay so yes this whole results in the trigonal planar structure of bcl3 now let's move on to the next one all right so here now we have sp3 hybridization let's see how we get this tetrahedral structure okay so in this case 1 s orbital and 3 p orbitals that means all the 3 p orbitals p x p y p z combine to form four sets of sp3 hybrid orbitals each of these now new orbitals has how much s character and p character so can we say the percentage s character is 100 divided by 4 that means 25 percent and percentage p character is again 100 divided by 4 but because there are 3 p orbitals so 25 into 3 that means 75 percent p character right now these orbitals arrange themselves in three dimensional space so that they are as far apart from each other as possible pointing towards the corner of a tetrahedron with the bond angle of so what is the bond angle now 109.5 degree okay so let's take it with an example now of methane. So methane, we have carbon. Carbon in the ground state has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So if we were to just go with the ground state, we could only make two bonds. You know that that is not possible. What we do is now the excitation. So we promote this one electron to this 2p so that we have now four unpaired electrons in the excited state, right? So now this 2s and 3 of these 2p hybridize together. So next step is the hybridization. So they hybridize together to form four set of equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals, right? And hence what you end up getting here is a tetrahedron geometry which looks like this, okay? Now if you see methane 1s1 of the hydrogen overlaps with these four sets of sp3 hybridized orbitals leading to this whole tetrahedral geometry. So here are the 1s orbitals of hydrogen each having one electron. You know that one electron is present in each of these sp3 hybrid orbitals like this. So this is how the structure looks like. Check this out. Okay. So these orbitals naturally spread out in tetrahedral shape with angles of about 109.5 degree between them helping to keep electron repulsions as low as possible. Alright, 